So I'm 27 years old and I'm a graduate uh, with a Bachelor of Biomedical Science with First Class Honours and I'm currently pursuing a full-time career as a musician, a uh, singer-songwriter and a sessionist. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, as of today, I'm playing with six different bands, six different groups. But I mainly make a living from these two bands. I make a living with these two bands mainly, uh, Kaya and Billy Blue and the No Uh By playing music, by choosing this path for music, I've been privileged and blessed to share the stage alongside uh, local heroes such as Yuna, uh, Zainal Abidin, um, Ultimate, Tala Music, Talita Tan, and Kugiran Maslow, yeah, I think some of you will know. Yeah, just to name a few. Yeah. yeah. So uh, before I go on any further, just allow me to start from the top, from the beginning. I, for the first 14 years of my life, I never was interested in playing music. Like, I didn't have the interest in it, but it was always there. Uh, it was just something that was always in the family. And I never had the interest in playing because I just thought it was like too, too much work, right? <laughs> too much of a hassle. Yeah, so I'm the fourth out of six siblings, raised by my amazing single mom, but she couldn't be here today, fortunately. Yeah, but that being said, there was always uh, a big family support from my uncles, aunties, my grandparents, always helping and supporting us whenever they could. So, um, so with that, we growing up such a big family, six siblings, and my grandparents together. There was different types of music always being played in the household, and I was also exposed to uh, different types of sports, different life knowledge from different generations, from my great grandparents to me, and even my younger nieces and all that. Mm. That yeah, so I was exposed to music from the likes of the Beatles, uh, the Frank Sinatra, Harry Belafonte, even new stuff like U2, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Backstreet Boys, you know, Spice Girls. Yeah, my sister is there. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my inspiration from that. Yeah, so there was always music being played. And my mom, she, she's awesome. She could play the guitar, she could play the ukulele, and she sings. So she, she taught my three older siblings how to play the guitar and a, the ukulele to a certain extent. And at the time I was in primary school, I wasn't interested at all. Because my main concerns was to kick the ball around, as many Malaysians would do. Uh, yeah, play football, play badminton, and of course PlayStation. Those were the three <laughs> things that I was doing, yeah. <laughs> so music wasn't there at all. Uh, so yeah. But when I started schooling, when I started schooling, I started picking up an interest in science and sports. But I guess it came naturally to me. It wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, of course it's difficult, but if I studied hard enough, I, I realized that I could do well with it. So I had that interest in science and sports. But music was still always there. And then when I was 14, one day uh, in my grandmother's house, there was, the guitar just lying there. And because my siblings always played, so one day I just thought maybe I just pick up the guitar. And there was this song playing by U2. I don't know if you all know U2. Uh, Without Without You. Uh, okay? So I got the easiest bass line. So, yeah. So I didn't know notes, I didn't know chords. So I just decided to pick up the guitar. And I decided, it was a, it's playing on a CD, my uncle's CD. So, played the song, and I just tried to follow whatever the song was uh, playing. Like the four chords song right now, you know, yeah. So four chords, so I just rewind, play back, try and listen and catch the song. And I realized by the end of the song, I could, I could play the song. It was, yeah, it was doable. <laughs> yeah. And then a few days later, there was another song being played. It was uh, Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. Yeah, I think you all know the tune. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So again, I didn't know how to play, but just by listening, I would rewind the CD, just try and follow whatever they're playing. And I found out that I could do it again by the end of the song. 
It was <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't hard. So I thought, hey, this is something I can do. It's not that hard for me. But later on I found out it is quite hard. Lah. <laughs> Two years of play. It's not that easy. But at that time it was like, hey, just just listen and play. Yeah. So for the next following years I would do that in school. Uh we'll come back home, I'll listen to whatever songs I like and just try and catch the bass line. Just listen to whatever was being played. And I would rewind the CD maybe 10, 20 times. I would just lock myself in the room and try and catch the song. So that really just kept me going and to so just learn new songs. And then in Form 5, uh, my school had an annual dinner and they needed a live band to play from the students. So without hesitating, I just volunteered. I called a few friends of us and we said, we form a band and we perform. And it turned out to be awesome. I don't know whether we were good on stage, but we enjoyed ourselves and the response we got was great. So little did I know that that was probably the start of something that would matter a lot in my life. Yeah. Then the school finished, I did well in my SPM. In 2010, I decided to enroll in a degree to do my Bachelor of Biomedical Science because as I mentioned, I always had the interest in science. And of course, Malaysian parents, you know, pushing us to do the science field because it provides stability and and stability in the future uh, for, for us. So I, I adhered and I did follow through. And I also had the interest in science. So in the weekdays, I would attend college. In the weekends, I would come back. And I would still continue practicing. And this time I met, uh, was close with my now bandmate in Kaya. We would just meet meet up on the weekends, just jam at home, practice, learn songs we like. He would be on guitar, I'll be on bass. Just the two of us playing, learning, learning new songs, whatever we could do. And I would say life happened in October of 2010. I got a phone call from my brother one night. He was organizing a battle of the band. And they needed a band urgently because they couldn't find any bands. And at that time, I wasn't a performer. We were just like room jammers, just playing in the room. And he called us and he said, we really need you to play and because we don't have enough bands. So reluctantly, we agreed. We found a drummer that night. We called him a good friend of us now. Uh, we, told, we showed him the songs, three songs. He learned the songs. And the next day, we went on stage and we performed in this competition. You can call it uh, pay, you can call it talent, or you can call it bias, but we won that competition. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. So, so that was 2010. Yeah. Nothing to do with my brother involved. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so that really started the ball rolling for my band, Kaya. That's how we actually started. We, we got a monthly resident gig at this, this bar at the time called Artista. So, and we, it pushed us to actually go out and look for more shows. So sporadically throughout the month, maybe once a month, twice a month, we would find shows and we would find gigs just to increase our talent, increase our confidence, gain confidence, yeah, gain recognition. This continued throughout my colleges for the next three years. I would study on weekdays, weekends I'll come back, find places to play. And we found a drummer at the time, so it was just the three of us. And in 2013, we officially got our first uh, weekly gig in a bar in BJ, I remember, every Saturday night. So we were paid 500 ringgit to play three hours plus of music. And that's not each, that's all in. So divided by two, it was 166 ringgit each. I did the math earlier. Uh, uh, it was 166 ringgit each to play almost three hours of music. But for me at that time, um, being a college student, you know, earning money on the side like this, it was awesome. I felt, I felt independent, I felt responsible, you know, not needing to rely on my parents for financial support. So I felt great. And kept doing this for the next four years of my degree, earning money on the side, getting more recognition, more playing in more weddings, corporate gigs, anywhere we could play just to get our name out. And then 2015 came along. Uh, it was the last year of my degree. I had to 
do my three month internship. So I chose to do it in India uh, because it was an option given by the college. So I went to India as a lab technologist in a hospital. I did my three month internship there. I loved it. It was nice. And one one night I was showering in the dorm in India. And I was just singing to myself in the shower. And this tune came out. The, as mentioned, the song So Right. No? It was just something like, I was so right, you were so wrong. That was it. Just that, that tune it was stuck in my head. And then I quickly rushed back to my dog and I recorded it on my phone. Because there was no guitar, there was no guitar available in India. No, I mean there is of course, but <laughs> not in the dog. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so I recorded it on my phone, and I remembered it, and then after the three months thing, I came back to Malaysia and I continued where I left off with Kaya. We continued performing. By this time we had gained some recognition. We were getting almost every week we were getting shows to play and yeah, big shows, corporate shows. And then I showed them the song as well, and they liked it. So that was important that we all had the same chemistry. So in 2015, we continued doing so. And in December of that year, I graduated. And of course, I had to look for a proper full-time job. Because, uh, because I had to, I had my third. Yeah. So in January 2016, I, I, got, I was blessed to get a position as a quality control executive in a Taiwanese pharmaceutical in Bangui. So I pursued that. I have to say from the first week I joined the job, I did not like it. <laughs> I, I enjoyed my stint in India, but this was different. It was just something that wasn't me. But because it was my first job and it was with my degree, I, I stayed resilient and I stuck through it just for the sake of doing it. Thank you. I did it for that, that whole year, stuck through. But in the weekends, I still maintain the same thing. Come back on weekends, uh, jam with my bandmates, perform where we could, still learn the sign and count, and do what we, whatever we could. And because that was my release from the week, the stressful week, you know, just to, to release whatever stresses I had. So in 2016, this was 2016, we continued getting more recognition and we started performing more original songs. Because we felt after five years, we had to at least show what we are made of. Because covers can only take you so far. So we started playing more original music and playing, getting feedback from the crowd, finding what they, what they say, and we take the constructive feedback. And then that continued for the whole of 2016. By 2017, in January, after a year at my position as a quality control executive, I quit my job. Because it just wasn't for me. I did not have the, the passion for it like how I had for music. So I took the risk in 2017 to pursue music full time. Okay. I was supposed to show you all, yeah. So this is my family I mentioned earlier. This is my siblings and my mom. And this was my job as a quality control executive. Yeah, nasty stuff. <laughs> so in 2017, I decided to pursue music full time. And at this time also, Kaya decided to record their whole album, an original album by ourselves. And at the same time, by taking this full-time music position, I joined my other band, Billy Blue and the Nowhere Man. That's my singer, Billy. Uh, and I also started playing with other musicians more, getting more exposure, more experience. And this really increased my, my skill or my bass skills immensely which I don't regret at all. So for 2017, we, Kaya, we, wherever we perform, we will put 20% of our savings for our album. It was fully funded by us. It was hard work. Sometimes we didn't get gigs. We had to, sometimes our band members were not free. So we had to delay the process. But in 2017, it was just hustling all the way. And we persevered and stayed resilient. And in November of that year, we managed to complete our debut album. That, uh, it was called Kaya on Toast. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the beginning of this year, we hit the ground running in January. We, we decided we have to have uh, album launch. And we, and through amazing friends and 
family of course we got uh, some awesome media listings in the star the sun uh malay mail yahoo news juice online rojak daily daily seni i think name of the sisters yes yeah uh yeah so we all we were really lucky to have all that 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 exposure and in april of that of this year we had our album launch in the b publica it was a awesome it was an awesome show hey, so, yeah so this is some of the listings that we had on the star uh it was a success the launch was a success you know over 400 people plus attending the show we were surprised we were not we did not expect that at all so that was awesome and the following week in may we we released our album on spotify um we released our album on spotify and one week later we got a call from his daughter fam to debut our song and the song that was chosen was so right the song that <laughs> was in my head in the bathroom in india <laughs> yeah and it spent four weeks and number one and seven weeks at number two and it's currently as of today it's still at number three if you tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m and on hits fm it will be played around 4 30 4 45 it's still be there yeah tune in if you want to check it out and today from doing music i'm standing in front of you all and i'm talking to you about my career of doing music so i've chosen this path it's my passion I, I give it all I got, give a hundred percent to it, and and I have no regrets. Of course, it's it's hard sometimes. It's not easy. Life is up down. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah. Sometimes I think that maybe I should find something more stable. You know, with a paycheck at the end of the month. But but this is I enjoy doing this, and I and I like doing it, and I always give a hundred percent. So before I end my talk, I would just like to say uh, life is a winding road, but if you stay disciplined, resilient, and uh, you persistent, you don't give up, you just can aim at the target, the journey will be amazing. And the last thing I would like to say is uh, if you have found your passion and you have chosen to follow it, make sure you do it with all that you got give it a hundred percent and your passion will take care of you and it will yeah it will cover you thank you